Hi everyone, today I'm going to go over a feature that I'm really excited about with Azure AI Search that's new as of this recording, and that is integrated vector embeddings. And what I'm going to walk through in this video is just how to create an index that has these integrated embeddings, and I'm going to index um, a bunch of PDF documents and then create an application on top of that that uses the embeddings to find content within the corpus of PDF documents that's close to what I'm asking and employ a large language model to format the output that it makes sense for me. So let's get started. So most of the work to create the index could be done from within the Azure portal, but it'll actually go a little bit faster for this demo if I do it from a combination of the command line and the REST API to Azure AI Search. So that's how I'm going to do it today. So the first thing I'm going to do since I'm starting from scratch is to create a new resource group. I'm going to call it Rob Cray AI Demo RG for resource group. Then I am going to create the index. And I can do this with this command. So I'm going to create a new index. I'm going to call it Rob Cray AI Demo. Uh, the resource group is one I just created. The SKU is going to be free. I can actually use a free SKU to get started with this. And then partition count one, replica count one, which is pretty much the limit for free. So that will create the actual service. And then in order to create indexes and you know actually make changes to that index, I'll need uh, admin keys. So I'll use this command to show me what the uh, the admin keys are for the for the index. Um, I'm going to delete all of this after I record this video, so it doesn't matter to me that you can see it on screen. OK, so let's save those environment variables. I'll go to my collections. And to create the index and the logic to create embeddings, uh, when it's both crawling the content and when it's uh, processing input from users for the large language model, um, I just need to do these four different things. So one is creating a data source. The data source is going to point back to the original documents that I'm going to use. It's just an Azure blob store bunch of PDFs in it. Um, I'll show you what those are in a minute. But the data source is just a handle so that the indexer, which is this guy down here, can get to that content and access it and has, has authorization to do so. So let's go ahead and create that data source. And that's created. The next thing we'll do is to create the index. An index is sort of like a database table. It has fields in it, which are like columns. And we define what those columns are or what those fields are up front. Um, here, I'm, I'm doing a pretty, pretty boilerplate vector index uh, arrangement. So I have a chunk ID, a parent ID, um, chunk. Now, the, this is the important part. So the chunk is the text that is being converted into a vector. And then the vector is the vector that's converted from the chunk. And it's the uh, OpenAI uh, embedding model that actually does that. And then the title is going to be the file name. Um, that's where we're just, we're just going to store the file name of the document that created that chunk. Let's go ahead and create this index. OK, 201 created. We've got an index. Uh, the next thing we need to do is uh, the, the indexer, which is down here. I'm not creating that yet because I need a skill set first. But the indexer will is, is kind of like the web crawler. So it's going to crawl the content and pull. it's going to split it into little pieces, create vectors, and then store the pieces, the chunks, and the vectors in the index. But in order to do that, it needs to have the skill taught to it. So the skill set is essentially the instructions of how to where where to find the, the documents so uh, and where to put them so there are inputs so it says the input is going to be text for you the output is going to be a vector and then there's some instructions on here about how to create a vector and basically it's going to be told to use uh, OpenAI's uh, vector embedding model in order to create a vector then put that vector in the index so skill set is like a recipe of how you actually do the indexing so we'll create the skill set. That's good. That's created. And then the indexer uses the skill set to convert the chunks into vectors and stores those in, into the uh, into the index. So we can see the the definition here is super simple. You know, here's the data source. That's where you get the data. The skill set is how you process the data, and the target is where you put the final, basically vectors and chunks that comes out of the crawling process. So let's create the indexer. Now this will actually take some time because what's happening. As we create the, the indexer, it's also going to kick off the first run of the indexer. So if we actually looked at the, the status right now, we would see that the indexer is currently running. In fact, why don't we go ahead and do that? So if we send and get the indexer status, we can see it's running right now. And currently, there's nothing in it. So uh, it's an empty index. It's, it's a, the indexer is kind of going through it. And it won't take that long. I think I have like 25 files. So in progress, OK, that's fine. 
it's indexing all documents because uh, if some documents found had already been indexed, it, would, it wouldn't do them again. It keeps track of that. It's pretty smart. Okay, so before we go and build an application that actually uses all this stuff, let's take a look at the index. I think it's really instructive to, to actually look at the index to see like what is this vector index? What's in it? How does it work? So in here, I'm going to do a vector search. So this is essentially sort of, if you're in SQL, this would be like a select statement. And I've, I've said, I just want the title field to come back. And if we kind of go back, you remember we created fields here when we created the index. So we defined what those fields were. One of them is title and it's a string. Um, I happen to know that this string is where the file name is going to land. But let's go ahead and select that. So we're going to select the file name. Um, we want to do a vector search. And this is what we're going to search for. So it's what is the aviation authority for the United States. Let me make that a little bit bigger so you can see it. And what's important is that because this is a vector search, it's not going to directly search for this text. This text is going to be converted into a vector. So Azure AI search is going to take this text. It's going to send it to the uh, OpenAI model that does vectorization. And it's going to turn that into a vector embedding, and it's going to search the index for that and then return what chunks out of the index actually align with that from a meaning point of view, not from keywords, but from meaning. So let me do that quick search. I'll make that a little bit bigger and we can see that it's it's found several chunks that align with what I asked. So I asked, what is the Aviation Authority of the United States? And it found that in. And if I kind of look at this, I've got one, two different files. So it found one chunk in this file that seems to align with that pretty well. And it found four chunks in a second file that seem to align with my question. So these aren't, you know, it's not one row per file. It's one row per chunk. OK, so what's a chunk? Well, let's take a look. So that's the title. Let's look at the chunk. So this is the, the the actual text it thinks it aligns with. And you can see that each of these scores aligns with a chunk. That's not the entire PDF. It's just a piece of it. So the, that uh, file has been chunked up and turned into a bunch of vectors and put into the index. And what is a the vector then? Well, let's take a look. So if we kind of look at what's the vector that it's finding, we can see that Oh, okay. So here's the vector. And then maybe let's add the chunk onto that as well. Let's look at, oops, need a comma. There we go. Okay. So for this question, when, once it vectorized my input, it found that this, this is the closest matching chunk. Here's the actual chunk, but this is the vector of that chunk. So, and this is the thing that's actually being searched. This becomes just really metadata. But this metadata or this chunk will come out, be added to the prompt, sent to the large language model. So let's do that now. To test this out, I created an application with Streamlit in Python. And what this application is going to do is just provide an interface for me to ask the large language model questions about the document corpus that's been indexed. So let's go ahead and run it. So I'll just run. Okay, here's our application. And you see it's very simple. So this has a title, has a subtitle, here's an input box, here's the ask. So maybe I don't know what the FAA is, so I can say, what is the FAA? And ask that question. Okay, now let's ask something more specific. So maybe we know that there's a specific directive, 2019, 2555, and we just wanna know which aircraft does this actually affect? And we'd like it formatted in a specific way. We'll make it a bulleted list. So if we ask that, we get back this response that it covers these three different models. And maybe we'd like to know where this information came from. So if we click read source document, and if we look at this document, we can see that indeed it is the right document. And even in the first paragraph, we can kind of see which models were affected that are written in the text. And so this is the knowledge that was extracted and the large language model kind of reformatted that into the list that we asked for. So before we wrap up, let's just try one more. And this time I will ask, what is Sears Design's contact information? I happen to be looking at these documents. I noticed there was this company called Sears Design. There was some contact information, but I don't want to go figure out which document it was in. I can't remember, but let me just ask the model to figure it out for me. And here I have the contact information, Sears Corporation, Sears Design Corporation. I have the phone number, email, and website. It looks like they actually were referenced in two different documents, two and four. Um, and, and then also there's, there's some additional information about an FAA employee. Hmm, I wonder why. Let's read the source document and see if we can figure that out. So if we look at this document, 
Um, I don't see Sirius at the top. If I search, so I'm going to find their contact information. It should be in here somewhere. Let's keep scrolling. Oh, okay, it's down at the bottom. So here's their contact information that was given. Um, and then the, the model picked up this part as well, and it thought it was important that there was some further information and included this FAA employee. Not really what I was looking for, but I understand why it did that. Okay, well, that's it. So we've basically what we've done is to create an index, um, took care of the chunking, which uh, Azure um, AI Search did for us, which is great. Um, it's also taking care of vectorizing our inputs. It's doing the vector search based on language meaning. And we created a quick application just to consume that into a fairly straightforward and simple uh, question and answer app. So I hope that was interesting, or at least you learned something. And I'll see you next time.